Hallelujah. Somebody, if you're blessed by that song, can you put your hands together? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you help me look at your neighbor and say, it won't fail you? Uh, say, it won't fail you. Say, I'm talking about God. Say, I'm not talking about your friend. We're not talking about your boss. I'm talking about God. Say, it won't fail you. Say, it won't fail you. Or say to somebody, I say, the word of God will come to pass in your life. In the name of Jesus. If you believe that, one more time, put your hands together, celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I said hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. The word of God is sure. Can I have my phone, the iPhone? Yeah. The word of God is sure. The word of God abides forever. Glory be to Jesus. I said glory be to Jesus. The word of God is sure. The word of God abides forever. God doesn't break his word. And I just want to encourage somebody under the influence of this service today. Just like the song says. says, I put my hope in Jesus. It's never failed me yet. It's faithful, faithful through every season. What season are you right now? What are you going through? You know, the funny thing about the way the devil plays a trick on our mind is that it makes you to see the worst part of the season. Yeah. So somebody is pregnant, for instance, and maybe you're feeling a little bit of pain or discomfort. If you focus on that, you will not see that some people are praying to be pregnant. So in the midst of God's faithfulness, you're complaining. Uh, you know, it's possible to focus on the most difficult part of a season and not focus on the most interesting part of the season. Can you hear me ask your neighbor, what season are you right now? Tell your neighbor, say, God is faithful in every season. Isaiah 46, when you read... Uh, Verse 10 of Isaiah 46. In fact, from verse 9. Can you put it up for me? From verse 9. From verse 9. It says, remember the former things of old. For I am God and there's no other. I am God and there's none like me. You know, the, whoever speaks like this is not speaking out of arrogance. It's speaking out of definitive self-knowledge. Yeah. Said, I am God. There's none like me. And verse 10 says, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do my good pleasure. Now, I believe somebody here this morning, God is telling you, my counsel over your life will stand. Yeah. Rain came, wind blew, but my house was built on you. Yeah. Built on the word. The word that cannot fail. If you allow your heart to be built on the word that doesn't fail, then you see the hand of God. Glory be to Jesus. This season, somebody is seeing the hand of God. I said somebody is seeing the hand of God. In the precious name of Jesus. In the past week, you know, last Sunday, God was just staring our heart as we worship him and in, in closing one or two of the services was a few words that came you know in the celebratory service like last Sunday it's possible that somebody would think the pastor is just trying to make us feel good when I say you know somebody uh, God is saying he's going to give us anniversary gift how many people remember some of those words uh, and I said some, somebody here this week you're going to get a job somebody here this week you're going to, and you know, some people just receive those words and just, uh, just see them as one of those things. <laughs> just one of those things. Just one of those things. But I need you to understand that God is delighted when we put our hope in his word. 
when we choose to believe his word, God is delighted, extremely so, extremely delighted. And that's what happened. Uh, by Wednesday, I already got three testimonies of outstanding things that only God can do. Somebody who may even be in this service this morning gave a testimony in church on Wednesday. And he said, my own was that you said, you said it again that between now and Wednesday, and I chose to believe it. But I went for an interview on Tuesday and I got a job. You know. And this, this, this person said, he studied in the UK, came back to Nigeria, I think 2016 or so. Has not been able to get any real job. Yeah. A lady sent an email from, from Germany. She's an online member and she used to be a physical member here. Um, watching last Sunday and she was like, I don't know, Pastor, when you said somebody will get two offers. He said, all of a sudden I just went on my knees as I was, you know, joining the service. I went on my I knew that was my word. I said, by Tuesday, I got two offers. By Wednesday, I picked one, and now I have a job. That's from far away Germany. Can you help me tell your neighbor, say, the word works. Say it again, say, the word works. Say it to somebody else, say, the word works. Praise God. Say, the word of God will work in your life. And tell your neighbor for me, say, this week, there's a testimony coming your way. Say you will share a testimony in the precious name of Jesus. I want to welcome everyone joining us online. Please put distractions away from you. Please let's appreciate them. Let's appreciate everyone joining us online. Please put distractions away from you and get ready to be blessed by the word of God. Now, if you're around the city of Lagos and you still keep joining online, I'm coming after you. Yeah. It's time that you... Uh, uh, choose to enjoy real fellowship with God's people. Yeah. Uh, I know, I mean, a great, great things are happening online and people are joining from all over the world. But if you are in Lagos, I mean, we have expressions, six expressions spread all over the place. Go, go, go to a physical expression and enjoy worship. Enjoy dancing church. Enjoy the presence of God. And then be useful to God, your local assembly. Yeah. Because there's a difference between being a bona fide member of our online church and just enjoying the word streaming. But members of online church, they function as volunteers and all that. They join prayer gatherings of the online church. They have a pastor. Pastor Boale Kotun is the online church pastor of the elevation. They know their pastor. Yeah. But you, at best, we say you are online viewer. We want to know you. We want to be able to interact with you. We want to pastor you. Yeah. We want to hold you accountable with the word of God. We want to, you know, get your testimony and know we're dealing with a tangible person. Not just statistics, but a real soul. Yeah. And you know, Jesus said, my sheep, they hear my voice. And the voice of a stranger, they will not obey. So if, if you're part of this church, you need to do a little better. COVID has been over since. Yeah. So you need to step out of your apathy. And become useful to the kingdom of God. Don't be selfish. Just enjoying the word at home. Yeah. And say, I've done church. Real church is not just involvement. Real church. Real church is a place where you are counted, where you belong, and where you serve God. You are interested in what is going on there. You are not just a consumer. God knows that you are interested in his kingdom. You are bringing souls saved to church. You are contributing to the development of the kingdom of God. You are helping other people. That's, let me appreciate them all the same. <laughs> Praise God. Let's get into the word of God today. I'm discussing what I've titled, the spirit of a pioneer. The spirit of a pioneer. As we go into the end of this year, this last quarter, and as we celebrate the anniversary of the Elevation Church, we are celebrating the spirit of a pioneer. 
And that spirit must find expression in the life of everyone joined to this commission. The spirit of a pioneer. That's what we're emphasizing today, still in this celebratory mode. Every one of us must engage the spirit of a pioneer. Now, somebody may be saying, even before I get into the, the full extent of this word, that, Pastor, you may need to excuse me from the word of today. I'm not just the type that gets things done. I'm not an entrepreneur. I'm not this. I'm not speaking to entrepreneurs. I'm speaking to Christians. Yeah. Not every pioneer. Pioneering does not mean you must start a business or start an organization of your own. Pioneering is a spirit. It's an effect of the hand of God that moves people into the fullness of what God has in mind for them. It is the hand of God that destroys complacency and apathy and puts you in the mainstream of God's divine agenda for your life. That's what we're speaking about. Is somebody still with me today? I said, are you still here? That's what we're speaking about. That's the spirit of a pioneer. That's what we saw in the life of Abraham, for instance, the father of faith, and the one to whom our sense of greatness can be traced. The vision of the Elevation Church is to make greatness common. God spoke to Abraham in Genesis chapter uh, 12, uh, can, you, can you put verse 2 and 3 up for me? Genesis 12, 2 and 3, quickly. It said, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. Verse 3, I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. And in you, all the families of the heart shall be blessed. This is Abraham. God giving him words and saying, look, greatness is in you. We're going to unleash that greatness and all that. But it is premised on engaging the pioneering spirit, the spirit of a pioneer, which means that you're not going to stay in one place, Abraham. You're going to go according to my divine instruction. I will put only restlessness in your spirit until you get into the center of my will for your life. Because that's where greatness is unleashed. In the center of God's will. Glory be to Jesus. Let's read another scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1. I will emphasize verse 6, 7, and 8 quickly. But before that, it's important to emphasize, I mean to show what I've obtained before now. Israel had been out of Egypt. But they had become settlers in the wilderness. It's Roman 1, go, go, go back to verse 1. Go, go to verse 1 quickly, quickly. And please, uh, uh, if you can give me in the New Living Translation. New Living Translation. It's Roman 1 and verse 1. New Living Translation. These are the words that Moses spoke to all the people of Israel while they were in the wilderness east of Jordan River. They were camped in the Jordan Valley near Soup. Between Paran on the one side of Topel, Laban, uh, Azeroth, and Dizahab on the other. Just describing where they were. Just so that there's no mistake. This was where they were. He said, normally, it takes only 11 days to travel from Mount Sinai to Kadesh Barnea. Going by the way of Mount Seir. 11 days. This, look at this, it says in verse 3, but 40 years after Israel left Egypt, on the first day of the 11 month, Moses addressed the people of Israel, telling them everything the Lord has commanded him to say. So this was the context. This is the context that a people whom God wanted to pioneer through break them out of slavery, take them to the land he has promised their fathers, became settlers in the wilderness. And when they got to the edge, they were still set, settling there, at the edge of the wilderness. Journey of 40 days became 40 years. Yeah, 
Now he was even saying, it is 11 days old from here to where you are going. And you have now settled here. Let's now go to verse 6 quickly. Verse 6, quickly. Verse 6. Said, when we were at Mount Sinai, the Lord our God said to us, you have stayed at this mountain long enough. It's just a journey of 11 days from here, yeah, to Kadesh Barnea, which is a part of where God has promised you. Said, it is time to break camp and move on. Go to the hill country of the Amorite, to all the neighboring regions. They mention names of places here. These places were Bible days places, but they are places God wants you to break into. Yeah. He's talking about hill country of the Amorite, all the neighboring regions, the Jordan Valley, the hill country, the western foothills, the Negev, the coast plain too, the land of the Canaanite and, and to Lebanon and all the way to the great Euph Euphrates River. It says, look, I am giving all the land to you. Go in and occupy it, for it is the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to all their descendants. The Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. There are places in God's agenda for you. There are, there, there are new things in God's agenda for you. Refusing to embrace the spirit of a pioneer will make you to, to, to circle a mountain for too long. Yeah. And you know, at this, especially this material time that we're living in, I'm saying this in the last service, that you don't look for excuses at this time. They are bound. Yeah, they are bound. They are bound. Economic situation is enough excuse for you not to do anything. Just wait until the situation is better. I don't know if somebody understands what I'm saying. If you are local to Nigeria here now, exchange rate is enough. Don't do anything. You know, this exchange rate is bad. Don't bother. Nothing will work now. Is that not what some people are saying? That's what makes the journey of 11 days become 40 years. Because the situation, the subsisting situation and the substantial situation around us have a way of capping our potentials, giving us enough excuse. See, anybody at all that chooses to divorce this season, nobody will blame you because things are hard and marriages are failing. And you can give anything as excuse. Excuses abound this season. But anyone that will work with God must jettison your sense of excusing yourself from the fullness of God's will for your life and say, I'm, I'm going to press in into what God has in mind for me. I'm not going to excuse myself from what God has in mind for me. This season, excuses abound. You just need to make up your mind. Am I going to excuse myself from what God has in mind for me? Or am I going to press through? And it's about embracing the spirit of a pioneer. A spirit that's willing to press. Who is a pioneer? Let me elucidate on that a little bit. Who is a pioneer? A person who is among the first to explore or settle into something new. Or a person, I mean, or, or to develop or be the first to use or apply a new method, area of knowledge, or activity. That's what it means. That's, that's what it means to be a pioneer. But when we bring it to kingdom, kingdom, and the word of God, we say simply that a pioneer lives by revelation, a settler lives by reaction. A pioneer lives by revelation. It means I'm getting the capacity to hear God and obey him and walk by revelation from time to time. Now, if I'm walking by revelation, I'm going to close my eyes to the things that are going on around me. I'm not going to allow these external factors to hold me back. 
I'm not going to allow any excuse. I'm just going to press on based on what I have seen, based on what God is, you know, staring my heart about. In Matthew 14, when you read verse 28 and 29, you read the story of Peter. Peter was a pioneer. Pioneer. The first person who cannot claim to be the son of God but walked on water. The pioneer. <laughs> first person to walk on water at least claim, had a claim to be the son of God. Peter was a son of man. But he also walked on water. But it was because he lived by revelation, not reaction. Now, let me, can I challenge somebody here this, the, the, today? Who may be going through a tough time in your marriage, for instance. Are you going to live by revelation or by reaction? If it's by reaction, anybody can live by reaction. You can slap that woman. You can tear the shirt of that man. That is reaction. But revelation calms you down. It gives you clarity. And because of revelation, what you know, you are able to be calm. <laughs> revelation tempers you. Yeah. In fact, when you are living by revelation, people don't understand you. How many people understood Abraham when he was living his, the, his father's country and all that and going to a place, said, I'm going to a place that he will show me? You know, that is total madness. Yeah. Anybody that met Abraham on the way just knew that, ah, something is. Yeah. That man needs to see. He needs to see a doctor. And you know, if it's church people, say, ah, we need to pray for Abraham. You know, when church people want to gossip, they'll say, we, we need to pray. Yeah. Gossips are premised on prayer. Have you heard what is happening to Brother Abraham, the husband of Sister Sarah? <laughs> we need to pray for them. Oh. Uh, we really need to pray for them. It looks, that man is losing it. He's losing it. It's happening very fast. I saw him on the road, you know. <laughs> I just saw him at the foot of Tom Milan Bridge. <laughs> and I asked him, where are you going? He said, the place where God will show me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it sounds like when you choose to walk by revelation. Things just don't make sense around you. People just try to decode you. They can't. Yeah, because when they expect you to to misbehave. You're not misbehaving. And it's because of what you know, what you are hearing from within, what you know. Glory be to Jesus. Peter in Matthew 14, they were on the boat. The situation was somehow, Jesus was walking towards them. All they wanted was for the things to be calm. And Jesus said, don't be afraid, it is high. And you know, and they were calm and all. And Peter all of a sudden was like, ah, we are walking on water now. I want to walk on water too. If it is you, ask me to come. And Jesus said, come. The settler sat in the boat. The pioneer steps out. Glory be to Jesus. <laughs> yeah. And from time to time, you and I, we need to ask ourselves a question. In this season of my life, am I a settler or am I a pioneer? Am I living by revelation or by reaction? What's going on around my life? Yeah. And it's also important to say here that it is possible to be pioneering in one aspect of life and be settling in another. Yeah. Some, somebody here may be, you know, pioneering, just started a new business. But marriage has settled since before COVID. Nothing new is happening. Everything is going down. And you just say, eh, eh, God has been faithful to me. At least this business is working. God wants the marriage to work too. Don't give the excuse that the business is working. Yeah. He wants the marriage to work too. And he wants to resolve the problem. If you refuse to settle and to ask God, what is next? What can we do differently in this marriage? How do we spice things up? And I can go on and on and on, but I'm just saying that this uh, subject is not unidimensional. Sometimes you have to see it from different ways and see where you are. Glory be to Jesus. Can you hear me ask your neighbor, are you a pioneer or a settler? Or ask somebody and say, are you a pioneer or a settler? 
and tell your neighbor, please answer me. <laughs> you know, when we say things like that, some people just say, Pastor said, we should say, we should say, I don't have to answer you, answer me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How many pioneers do we have in the house today? <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. You can appreciate yourself. And I hope we have a lot of pioneers online too. I pray in the name of Jesus that the spirit of a pioneer will descend upon everyone connected to this service. In the name of Jesus. As we go into this new week, there shall be only discontent in your heart. There shall be godly restlessness to stop circling the mountain and move on to, to the next thing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Or oh, somebody say it better. Amen. Amen. Traits of a settler. Let's quickly look through that. The traits of a settler. I want to quickly look through that. One is a lack of vision or what I choose to call clarity. Lack of clarity. You become a settler where the most important aspect of your life is foggy. You cannot say this is what is next. That's the making of a settler. Making of a settler is when the most important areas of life, things are not clear cut. Proverbs 29 and verse 18. Proverbs 29 and verse 18. Give me a new living translation quickly. I want to point out something there. There's something about knowing what God is doing per time. Yeah. Knowing what God is doing per time. It said when people do not accept divine guidance, the wrong word. Give me a message translation. Message translation, message translation, quickly. There's something I'm looking for. It said, if people can't see, that's what I'm looking for. If people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. Yeah. When you can't see what God is doing, you know, some people are specialists at seeing what the devil is doing. But when it comes to what God is doing, they have no idea. They have no idea. They have no idea. As we go into this new week, you will focus more on what God is doing. Yeah. For this week, you can even leave the devil alone and just focus on what God is doing. Yeah. At the end of this message, I'm going to give you how to focus on what God is doing. And we're going to pray with it so that you can go with it and pray more on that. Because some people think that prayer starts and ends with burning the devil. After the devil has been bound, what is next? Eh? What, what, what is next? What is God doing? Where are the opportunities? What am I supposed to step into? Is it clear? Am I gaining clarity about how to work out this business? What's next on this career path? So the devil is not in the picture. It's just me and God, and we have to gain clarity. That's how to be a pioneer. Yeah. That's how to be a pioneer. When darkness has been dispelled, we need palpable light. Yeah. Where things are clear. A settler is the one that is not a stickler for light, for clarity, for direction. So everything is so-so. Secondly, traits of a settler. Secondly, subscribe to a risk-averse life. A settler has fully subscribed to a risk-averse life. So there are people ruled by fear, fear of failure, unwilling to try, you know, again or try something new. That's a settler. You know, like I always say, the mantra of a settler is que sera, sera. What will be, will be. So they cross their leg and say, que sera, sera. Whatever will be, will be. Finish it, finish it. <laughs> a pioneer does not say que sera, sera. A pioneer says, whatever God said must come to pass. Yeah. This dream shall be fulfilled in my lifetime. It's not whatever will be, will be. Glory be to Jesus. This marriage will work. This business will not fail. 
I don't care what is happening in any nation where you're joining us from. God is faithful through every season. In every nation. Whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yeah. So it's not Kesera Sera. A, 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 a settler, you know, is risk averse. It's risk averse. In, let, let's, let's go into the scriptures quickly on that note. I, I really want to drive, in, drive home something there. You know, in 2 Kings chapter 6, the Bible says that King Benadad, the king of Syria, besieged Samaria and caused a, a, a lockdown. You know, like what happened during COVID, where there was a lockdown. Yeah. Nobody was moving anywhere. It was exactly like what happened during COVID. They shut the gate, shut everything, everybody, and resources became very scarce. There was food inflation. There was all kinds of inflation to the point, I don't know if you've read 2 Kings chapter 6 before, to the point that two women came into an agreement chop your son today, I ch we chop mine tomorrow. Yeah. They started killing their children to eat. Yeah. Because there was a siege. There was a lockdown. And you know what happened? These days, we, we know that that's cannibalism. We don't do that, but children there symbolizes future. When things are bad, settlers eat their future today. No plans for the future. They just eat their future today. They, 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 they mortgage future opportunities for today's comfort. That's what settlers do. Because you, you can't prepare for a future that you have not seen. Glory be to Jesus. So, in the midst of all that, in 2 Kings chapter 7, from verse 1, the word of the Lord came. You know, we've been emphasizing this thing about the word coming to pass. The word of the Lord came to Elisha the prophet. By this time tomorrow, food inflation will come down to zero. There will be more than enough. Yeah, for everybody. It says, by this time tomorrow, a seer of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel and two seers of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. That was a word that came through Elijah. I mean, Elisha. And some people who heard it says, even if God will open the windows of heaven, these things cannot be. Yeah. <laughs> but you know when God will bring his word to pass? It was the most unlikely people that he used. That's one. Two was that they were no risk-averse people. They were not risk-averse people. Some people want the word of God to come to pass in their lives, but they're not willing to take any risk at all. Verse 5 of 2 Kings chapter 7. Uh, uh, um, yeah, let's, let's go to... No, go to verse, verse 4. Verse 4. Verse 4 talks about a conversation. Verse 3 described them, the four leprous people. Verse 3, four leprous people. Now there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate, and they said to one another, why are we sitting here until we die? We must take risk this season. That's what they said to themselves. We're not going to be risk averse. We must embrace the spirit of a pioneer and the dimension, their journey for clarity. Said if we stay here, we enter into this. If we say we enter into the city, the famine is in the city, and if we and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now therefore, come, let us surrender to the armies of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall die. I mean, we shall live. And if they kill us, all die, not die. That's what they told themselves. Yeah. That's what they told themselves. What kind of conversation are you having this season? That's the big deal today. What kind of conversation are you having? These guys had this conversation. It's like 
What's failure? We, can, we, we fail, we fail, we continue. Yeah, we do it, we do it, we move on. Here is dead, here is dead. This one has dead too, but as an option of they may spare us. So we go in this direction. The people in Samaria, they're already chopping themselves, killing themselves. If we stay here, we're going to die here. Energy is depleting. We don't have energy again. If we go in this direction, there's still the hope that it may spare us. So they went in that direction. If there's a man or a woman to, that will embrace the spirit of a pioneer, there's a God that confirms his word. As they started to move, you, time will not permit, but you can read. As they started to move, you know what happened. Every step they took towards the Syrian army, God amplified the, the, the sound. The Syrians heard them as if the legions of, you know, soldiers and all that coming, battalions of soldiers coming, and they started to run. And they left everything. It was, it was too much. The mongous resources left for them. They were now the ones that went into the Samaria and told them, ah, the word of God has come to pass. So. They didn't even know there was a word, though. But they went to say, there's food here. There are resources here. And before you know it, the whole city came out. And the man who said, if God will open the windows of heaven, nothing will happen. They trampled on the man. Yeah. Because the prophet said, you will see it, but you won't touch it. You will touch it. Yeah. I cannot hear your amen. Amen. Yeah. You will see your dreams come to pass. Amen. You will touch the word of God in tangible form. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. everything God is showing you in this season will come to pass. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, somebody shout a better amen. amen. Tell your neighbor, it's not time to be risk averse. <laughs> Say it's time to take risk. To risk. Calculated risk. Say, take risk with grace. God will back you up. Say it again. Say, God will back you up. The God that backed up the lepers is still alive. He will back you up. Oh, say it better. Amen, somebody. Glory be to God. Thirdly, in the traits of a settler is stability and predictability. Stability and predictability. Some people just love stability and predictability. And it creates a problem. It makes us settle too fast. Pioneers become settlers once they find a comfort zone. Comfort zone can turn a pioneer to a settler. Somebody who used to be on fire, who used to just go for it, go for it. All of a sudden, it looks like everything is working. So let's just... Let's manage our lot. Yeah. There's more where you got that from. Don't let stability and predictability rob you of the greater things that God has ahead of you. Beware of what we call orthodoxy trap. This is the way we have been doing it. So we're settling there. If, you, if you've noticed in our church, we like to tweak things a lot as God is showing us. Many people don't like it, but we have to we have the responsibility to obey God. You too have the responsibility to obey God. Because there are things that God will move you to do this season. They may not be things you are used to. But some people will say, me, I don't like talking to people. And you feel that you should call somebody on the phone. Yeah. Two weeks now, you have been saying it. And I feel like calling that person. You know me, I just don't like disturbing people. Disturb people. Yeah, disturb people. This season is a season where you have to disturb people. You come out of your comfort zone and do the things that are unusual to you. Yeah. Do the things that are unusual to you. Push yourself a little bit more. Let's, let, let me show you some things in, in the world. Uh, Genesis uh, 49. When you read verse 14 and 15. In Genesis 49, Jacob was dying. And he said, let me pronounce blessings or tell them what will befall them. That's the way he put it. All the 12 tribes, all his sons, and they all came. When he got to Issachar, in Genesis 49 verse 15, can you put that up for me quickly, please? 
In Genesis, uh, verse, verse 14. Let's start from verse 14. He said, Issachar is a strong donkey lying between two bodings. A strong donkey lying between two bodings. He said he saw rest. That rest was good. And that the land was pleasant. He bowed his shoulders to bear a body and became a band of slaves. If you know the scriptures well, you know how Issachar was described in First Chronicles. It talks about the sons of Issachar. He said they had understanding of time and knew, knew what Israel was supposed to do. He said that two things. Something turned around. Yeah. Instead of becoming a settler like their father described them here, they embraced the spirit of a pioneer. Yeah. Because the description here was that you are a strong donkey, but you have settled. So before you know it, they are just piling things up upon this donkey until the donkey became a band of slaves. And Jacob was saying, this is what may befall you. You, you. you may become a settler. You are, you are strong, but you are in your comfort zone. And you need to brace up. Is somebody still with me today? Yeah. You need to brace up so that you don't, you know, become a settler. Sometimes what makes people uh, uh, engage the orthodoxy trap is what has worked before. What has worked before. Let me give you another example. Judges 15. When you read from verse 14. In Judges 15, Samson was captured by the Philistines. They, they bound him and all that. But the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Yeah. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him, verse 14 there, mightily. And the rope on his hands became like flax that is born with fire. And his bones broke loose from his hands. Somebody who has been tied down this season, bonds will break loose. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. May the spirit of a pioneer come upon you afresh. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything started to break around. You know, they thought they had captured something. Yeah. Look at the next verse. The next verse, quickly. Then they said, Samson found a fresh jawbone of a donkey, reached out his hand and took it. And with it, he massacred and killed a thousand men with it of the Philistines. Then Samson said, verse 16, with the jawbone of a donkey, heaps upon heaps, with the jawbone of a donkey, I have slain a thousand men. Verse 17, and so it was, when he had finished speaking, that he threw the jawbone from his hand and called the place Ramat Lehi, which is a heap of jawbone or something like that. That's what it means. Now, this is where I'm going. Samson, the spirit of a pioneer came upon him. God showed him what to do. The only thing is that he refused to settle with it. If it was somebody else, that jawbone will be passed from generation to generation. In fact, they will make a monument around the jawbone and say this jawbone will be using it to kill. But what they didn't know is that, especially in this, this season of crisis, innovation, creativity abounds. If you settle too fast, innovation is like a freight train. It crushes anything that you miss on the way. There's more destruction coming. That's why I'm preaching this message. Whatever industry you function right now, please listen. If you settle with orthodoxy trap, that business may be no more. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Yeah. We've seen so many in time past, so many uh, organizations, something that used to be innovative, cutting edge, became something that has been forgotten because people settle too fast. Whatever you are doing right now, you need to keep your eyes on God. You need to, you know, fine tune the way you gain clarity and information. God wants to send you innovation, creativity. The spirit of a pioneer is the one that moves people in the right direction. This guy threw away the, the, the jawbone of a donkey. Refusing to build a monument around it. To have the orthodoxy trap. Even when we talk about ministry, church, the orthodoxy trap is hindering the growth of the gospel. 
Something that worked in time past will not work now. This is not how church used to be done. I hope you understand what I'm saying. The reason why some of you today are not in, quote unquote, what we call orthodox church is because of orthodoxy. But some of us are building orthodoxy around our lives and around our businesses. And the spirit of the pioneer does not work that way. I, I, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. We have to be able to move with God, work with God, hear God, and follow God. Know what is right for each season. The mission remains the same. The method must be tweaked according to divine instruction and divine enlightenment from time to time. Mission is the same. Method must be tweaked according to divine enlightenment, revelation knowledge. So we won't come around the jawbone of a donkey. When it's done, it's done. Many people are with obsolete ideas, obsolete methodologies, things that have expired, and you're camping around them. Why are you so in love with that method? God has moved on from that method. You can't be in love, so much in love with your methodology, and the business is crashing. You're so in love with the way you love to do things. You have high turnover of staff, and you're still not asking yourself, why are they leaving? Because all you're saying, eh, yeah, that's the way I love to talk. Just talk to people anyhow. Time that you allow the Holy Spirit to turn your tongue. So you know what is called a soft answer that turns the way around. You change your methodology. You embrace something new. You know that God is doing something new and you must be a part of it. Many companies of old, like I said in the last service, I mean, I can go on and on and on. I love to study such things. I mean, it's very prominent in history. In corporate history. It's Kodak, for instance. Kodak, how many of us remember the, the film that we put in? Yeah. There are many old people in this service today. Yeah. So you take a picture, then you go into the dark room, you remove the film, and then you wash it. I don't know what they do, maybe a chemical. Then they'll come out with what they call negative. How can we be carrying negative around when there's positive? <laughs> yeah. Come out with negative. And then you now, you now wait. If you take a picture today, now they can tell you to come back tomorrow to come and take your, collect your picture. Now, look at it, look at it. This is, this is. Uh, <laughs> right now, you know, I can take a picture of individuals in this service now, you know, and I'll tell you, from here now, I'll send it to print, in my printer in the office. You come and, you know, pick it on your way out. If you want paper, if you don't want paper, I will just WhatsApp it to you. Yeah. You have your, your picture. Yeah. It does not require anything. It's purely digital. But hear this. The guy that discovered the first foundational knowledge about digital photography, digital imaging, happened to be a staff of Kodak. Google it, you see his name. I think Simon something. They didn't listen to him. Yeah, orthodoxy trap. They said there's nothing as good as the traditional photography. Yeah. To date, I think Kodak, they said they are doing respirator or something. During COVID. <laughs> yeah. They, 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 they're out. Knocked out. Another one of my favorite was a company called Blockbusters. Yeah. They distributed uh, movies with video, DVD, and all that. Open stores all over the place. People will drive in and exchange, or they will mail it to their house. You know, they have to return it. You have to be a member. Blockbusters was making a lot of money. They were already having market cap, you know, like billions of dollars when the idea of Netflix came. Yeah. That digitally people can get, I mean, get in, sit in their house and get content digitally. Do you know that Netflix was offered to blockbusters for $50 million and they refused to buy? And yet what they refused to buy, owing to their jawbone of a donkey, knocked them out completely. Today, blockbusters is no more. Netflix is worth $98.2 billion. Yeah. The hunter has become the hunted. May that not be the portion of your business. May you not be knocked off of your path. That's why you need to embrace the spirit of a pioneer. Yeah. 
That's why you need to embrace the spirit of a pioneer. There are greater things that God wants to do in this season, and you must fully participate in them, fully and completely, fully and completely. Somebody say after me today, say, I'm obedient to the word of God. I'm obedient to divine prompting. I gain clarity from time to time in the name of the Lord Jesus. Say, I'm open to newness. I'm open to new things. Say, I will not settle easily. Say, I'm rising beyond my feelings. I will not be bound only with what I love. I will open up to the move of the Spirit in my life. Glory be to Jesus. I said, glory be to Jesus. As I wrap this up, I will just do two more things and we'll close. One of the greatest traits of the DNA of a pioneer is being unreasonable and counterculture. Many other things in that DNA I've, I've said is in the midst of other things that I've said. But the, the pioneer's DNA, you have to be unreasonable and counterculture. You have to be able to say the way things are going, if I follow in that direction, what is ahead? Is there something that we need to do today that will make sure that we're preserved for tomorrow? And I'd love to read uh, this quote by George Bernard Shaw that says, the reasonable man adapts himself to the world. The unreasonable one persists in trying to adapt the world to himself. Therefore, all progress depends on the unreasonable man. Our world owes it to unreasonable people with the spirit of a pioneer all of the innovation, the things that make our life easier, we hold it to them. We hold them a bunch of gratitude that we may never be able to, to, you know, to pay back. Yeah. You can imagine if there was no airplane, all these jackpot, jackpot things, we would just be dying in the wilderness, in Sahara Desert. Yes. Yeah. You know, today you can say, I want to jackpot and just buy a ticket and go. Did you create the plane? Yeah. You need to think about it. You need to think about it. You know, every time you fly to Europe, you have crossed the Red Sea. Do you know the miracle God has to do to bring them across the Red Sea? Yeah. Some people innovated how to cross the Red Sea. God did not have to intervene again and give any rod and say, part the Red Sea. No, you don't need to part the Red Sea. Just cross, just fly across it. Yeah. That's the gratitude that we hold to innovators. You have to become one of them. This church is raising people that will become such innovators in the name of Jesus Christ. Put my last slide on. Everyone rise on your feet. Everyone at home, join us. Rise on your feet. Put my last slide on. As we go into this week, this is what I want you to do as we go into this week. We're going to pray right now. We're going to pray right now. But there are questions that trigger prayers. You know, I told you that this week, take a break. Except you are so instructed. Don't bother to bind the devil. <laughs> yeah, don't bother the devil. Just focus on questions that will trigger clarity, trigger innovation, trigger divine instruction because God is about to unleash upon us the spirit of a pioneer. So as many as can, please take a picture of this because you need to pray with this this week. As you are asking those questions, Expect God to speak to you. Expect God to speak to you, everyone online. What is next for me? My family, my business, my, what is next? God, what is next? I need clarity. Yeah, I need clarity. What is next? What is next? Who is God sending to me? Or who, are, who, who is God sending me to? Vice versa. Yeah. There's a place a man can be, a woman can be, that you will not be able to see opportunities and opportunities will not see you. It depends on who, are, who you are hanging around. There are people who are gatekeepers in industries, in nations, in cities. When God wants to help a man, 
is either he sends them to you or sends you to them. They are gatekeepers in industries. They can tell you the history of the entire industry and they know what is ahead. May God send such people to you this season. May, you, may, may God send you to them this season. May your path cross in the name of Jesus. Which of the problem is mine to solve? My rise of problems right now. And some people are camping around the problem rather than asking which one is mine to solve. Because it's the solving of that problem. Just like David brought down Goliath in 1 Samuel 17. It is the solving of that problem that you rise to your next level. Ladies and gentlemen, there's no future in any position. I don't know which position you occupy right now. Group CEO. Global lead pastor. There's no future in any position. The future is in the revelation. Yeah. What God is saying today is what prepares us for the future. As I'm standing here now, global lead pastor, if God gives me any revelation, eh? I've moved on. No? Oh, I'm just telling you the truth. I owe it to God before I owe it to you. Yeah. If there's any other thing that God wants me to do, I have gone. I'm like Abraham. You will look for global lead pastor. I'm just kidding, but I hope you understand what I'm saying. I am not emotional about this church. Yeah, I've told my children, this is not their inheritance. I hope you understand what I'm saying. There's nothing that a pioneer cannot walk away from. If you are a man on an assignment, you are a pioneer, you don't become unnecessarily emotional about anything. You follow God and follow divine instruction. Is somebody stay with me today. Yeah. Yeah. So what is next? What's the new thing that God wants, to, wants done through me? What can I leverage to achieve the desired outcome? Lift your two hands to Jesus. I don't know which of these questions apply to you. But I just want to give you two minutes right now to lift your voice and talk to God. The prayer starts now, but it doesn't end now. It goes all through this week to the end of this month, to the end of this year. Because this last quarter of this year must deliver unusual clarity for you for the years ahead. Lift your voice right now and just speak to God. It's faithful to generation. So why will he fail now? He won. It's a word that's never failed. Somebody pray. Pray right now. Pray right now. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Marando pradeka laba shata yaga. Rekoto pradenke liko shoto yanda radaga bayaba. Pray in the spirit. Pray in understanding. Every question that I need to ask this season, Father, bring them to my mind. Bring them to my mind. Bring them to my mind. Every data that I need to decode this season, Lord, bring them to me. Bring me data. Bring me information. Bring me anything that will bring clarity into my life, into my business, into my career path. Somebody speak to God today. The spirit of a pioneer is coming upon this house afresh. As a church, God is breaking us into new grounds, new ministries, new ministry opportunities giving us opportunities with what to do with women, what to do with men, what to do with children, how to transform the life of teenagers, how to build solid marital relationships. God, 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 in the midst of everything happening in our world, doors of opportunities are opening unto us to solve problems. That same pioneering spirit is coming upon you today. Everyone online, everyone in this gathering, you will not be trapped in orthodoxy. Fear of failure will not bind you. In the name of Jesus, receive grace to try something new. Receive grace to push the limits that the enemy may have put on your destiny. 
Thank you, Jesus. Marada Kalabosa. Iketo Pradenga Lekebo Shataya. Thank you, Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. I said, in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Well, I have to say this word to some people here. Someone is here today. What I see in my spirit is like a wet blanket over your soul. So aspiration has become difficult. Just like a wet blanket that just covers your soul. And like the psalmist says in Psalm 42, Why are you downcast, O my soul? He said, put your hope in God. That person, wherever you are, under the influence of my voice, whether here live or online, I rebuke whatever is responsible for that wet blanket. I command you, be rolled away in the name of Jesus. So I speak against that spirit of heaviness. Be gone in the name of Jesus. I declare right now that the hold of fear is broken over your heart. Whatever paralysis initiative, whatever leads to inaction, we break his hold over your heart. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I hear in my spirit for somebody here, God said, you have my permission. Don't wait for other people's permission. Yeah, you have my permission. You have my permission. Yeah. Somebody under the influence of any negative authority right now, any authority that's limiting you, whether the authority, negative authority of a spouse, negative authority of parents, negative authority in, uh, uh, in the industry, I stand in agreement of faith with you right now that the spirit of a pioneer will come upon you Amen. with the wisdom of God to break through that authority, Amen. that limiting voice in your life in the name of the Lord Jesus. You step out of this place, see possibilities. No more impossibilities. In the name of Jesus. In the midst of darkness, your light will shine. In the name of Jesus. Every voice that is rising against the vision of God for your life, every voice of fear, will stand against them in the name of Jesus. We decree that you are breaking through those voices. In the name of Jesus. Anyone suffering from any kind of authority abuse, we decree before this month of October is over, gain your, free, your, your true freedom. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, everlasting Father. We we'll bless your holy name. Lord, as we go into this new week, let the spirit of a pioneer rest upon your people. Amen. Give us clarity. Amen. Let something done on us that will shape the next decade for us in the name of Jesus whatever is killing initiatives and businesses in our industry will not be able to touch our own initiative in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ somebody who is blessed today put your hands together celebrate Jesus hallelujah